Galaxy S24 Ultra versus iPhone 15 Pro Max, both in the titanium color, two weeks later. We'll begin by talking about one of the most important elements of a phone, and that is the battery life. So after two weeks of um, using the S24 Ultra and using the iPhone 15 Pro Max for several months, I can tell you right off the bat, the S24 Ultra has the better battery life. Now, I haven't actually took the actual data of the actual screen on time because it's been varying depending on how I've been using it. But I do know for a fact the way I've, the same type of usage, I've been getting more battery life with the S24 Ultra. Um, the iPhone's still really good. It's a really strong battery, but I'm finding I'm getting longer life out of the S24 Ultra. Now the iPhone has always been pretty good and especially in the Max line of phones, so there's not really much to say about that one. Um, but this one still retains its really strong battery life as well. Very good standby time. And Apple doesn't have too much to worry about here as it's still right up there. And I'm guessing they're gonna go to a larger size this year with maybe a bigger battery. So they'll catch right up anyway. Next thing I wanna talk about is the cameras. Now, I'm kind of feeling like this is just typical Samsung versus Apple once again. And why I say that is because once again, we have a Samsung phone loaded with features with a really long zoom, although they went to a five times optical down from the 10X. Now that could seemingly be annoying for some people. I actually kind of like this because I think the five times optical is not only gonna give you better quality, but it's more usable distance. 10 times is very far. Um, I still like 10 times optical on S23 Ultra, but because they're combining the software and hardware, the 10 times images still looked very good on this phone. So I'm not disappointed whatsoever. You do have a lot of video options, 8K, and you have a ton of software features just like prior Samsung phones. Overall, the results turn out a little bit very sharp. I like the front facing camera though. The results really make your face look soft and not overly clear and show every little pore on your face like the iPhone does. But it definitely doesn't go out wide enough for vlogging in my opinion. I like how all the settings are right here in camera. And the overall camera experience has been pretty great for the S24 Ultra a couple weeks later. Now the iPhone still produces to me the better results in terms of just lack of like over sharpening just the image just looks really good out of camera. And I feel like it's, I still feel like the images just kind of have a more pleasing effect. Maybe it's the warm tones that come to this phone or whatever. And the video definitely is something I prefer on the iPhone. It just looks freaking amazing. Um, so the iPhone definitely wins to me in a couple of areas of camera, but I still like appreciate and I, I think I prefer using the S24 Ultra just because of all of its zoom ranges, um, all of its you know modes. It's just it's a more fun camera to take out and about. So in the area of camera, I feel like the iPhone has the better video and sometimes more pleasing warm images. I, I like the selfie camera on the Samsung. I think it produces more soft images on the front. And also I like the zoom ranges. It's a lot more uh, zoom effect. You, know, you can go much further and it's just more fun to use. So if I was going out to have fun, I was I was trying to have everything in the kitchen sink for a vacation. I want the S23 Ultra or S24 Ultra. If I'm going out to take my highest quality video from maybe the YouTube channel or something a little bit more pro, um, and I just don't want to think about it much, and I want really great results without having to do much, I think the iPhone is my choice. To illustrate some of what I was talking about, you can see here is some pictures of some ducks. Now, I wasn't very close to these ducks because they would want some of my food. But at the same time, you can see this is an area where I kind of like the sharpening because it kind of sharpens up the ducks. But I was able to zoom in, pinch right in on them at 10 times. Um, so you can see right here, a very sharp image. They're amazing. They look great but I'm not so sure everyone's gonna love that effect. This was a very cloudy day. You can see just very sharp, beautiful images there for the S24 Ultra. And if you like to pinch in and zoom on stuff, sometimes that sharpening effect does really help out to showcase that a little bit better. On experience, you do have something a little bit more toned down. So you'll see, it kind of looks a little bit more realistic, I would say, but, when you start zooming in, it's a little noisier at the further zooms. So, but it's, it has got a, like a pleasing aesthetic to it. So they're very close. I mean, really 
It's going to come down to your personal preferences. They're very, very close. Both are really great consumer options, though. Now, when it comes to the design and the build, I do feel like I've been appreciating the Samsung a little bit more. It feels sturdier, stronger. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's an illusion because it's just bigger and bulkier and more squared off. I don't know. It just feels like a sturdier, bigger phone than the iPhone over there. Um, but not the iPhone doesn't feel strong. It's just it's not as strong feeling as the 14 Pro Max, but that one was much heavier. The Samsung also has more weight, but it's not that noticeable as they went with the titanium feel. And I do like the symmetrical cameras here that are straight down. You do have a symmetrical display, no curves on the edges. I love that they went flat here. Really do love this. It kind of feels like you're holding a flat screen TV in your pocket, Mini miniature version, but still pretty huge for a phone. It swallows up your hand for sure. But it fits nice, it does. With a case though, the S24 Ultra can become quite a brick in your pocket. Now I feel like the iPhone's design is more reminiscent of Samsung's S24 Plus, or Samsung's S24 Plus is more reminiscent of the iPhone design because they had this first. But I do feel like it's a more comfortable hold. Over here at the corner, that, that feel, at the, the palm, it just kind of slips in very nicely. So I like that feel. But at the same time, you know, it just feels very nice and clean classy elegant but the same kind of as before like the overall look and feel is not that different i do like the reduced bezels here and they kind of feel a little thin which is quite nice but comfort wise you can definitely tell the iphone's going to be better but it just kind of doesn't feel like it stacks up to this phone when you kind of look at them side by side it feels like samsung's ahead uh, just because of the nature and the size of the s24 ultra I'd love to see a larger iPhone Max. I really hope they go that way this year. Okay, so everything that irritated me about the Samsung display before actually got better here, but for some people, it's very annoying. What do I mean? Well, the display used to flicker at 240 hertz, which is something you can't, the human eye can't see. You could have seen it a lot in my speed tests in my videos where you would see this little flicker on my S23 Ultra. Your eye can't pick that up, but it bothers some, and it bothered me for sure. Um, it's called PWM. You could look into that later, but they toned it down here. Now, why some people don't like this is because they toned it down so much that even the vivid mode doesn't look overly saturated. This is the big deal here. Difference, though, is that Samsung's focus on the S24 Ultra was by design. It was designed to be a more comfortable display for a long extended use, and they have absolutely nailed this. This display is not only crystal clear, it has anti-reflective coating. It's like anti-glare. This thing is just amazing for extended use. This is the best Samsung display I've ever seen ever when it comes to using it for an extended period of time. Now, when you look at this phone in the store, you're not going to be wowed by its oversaturation, but that's because you're looking at it from the perspective of Samsung of the past where they're very vivid and popping colors. Um, so if you're into the vivid and popping colors, this right now, as of the recording of this video without an update yet, is going to probably disappoint you. But if you want a comfortable display for a long extended use with still enough saturation for pretty much, you know, daily usage, I think you'll still love this panel. And some people say, stop making excuses for them. You need to criticize them. No, I'm telling you my experience. I wasn't a big fan of the oversaturated. I'm more team natural anyway. So personally, I like a more natural display that doesn't, you know, sear the eyes. I like the vividness for some videos and stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still been one of my favorite Samsung displays ever, especially that it's flat. The Note 5 was one of my favorite notes of all time just because of its flat display. Now, the iPhone kind of looks the same. So you could say that Samsung kind of went the iPhone route with a natural look. It kind of has that toned down, more natural look to it. So Samsung and Apple kind of displays kind of look the same here these days. Um, Samsung does make a lot of the iPhone displays, so that makes a lot of sense. But I think Apple's saturation is slightly higher still. So it's kind of weird that this year Samsung saturation is a little bit like it looks a little bit less, honestly, than the 15 Pro Max right now, which is really weird overall. Now, the actual display experience, both of them have a wide display here, but the Samsung takes much better advantage with its edge panels, with the ability to pop view and all the feature set that you do have inside of it. It also feels like a much bigger display because it's taller. It just feels like you're holding a productivity display beast here. Then you could use the S Pen to take notes and stuff. The major pros I think to this panel is that you can still do the landscape mode. 
For a phone this big, I love that you can do that. You can't do that on an iPhone, which is kind of lame. They used to do it on the Plus models, but not anymore. Um, and also you have more of a more of a one-handed mode where you can kind of change it like this, make it smaller. So there's a lot more customization with that. Apple has their own one-handed mode as well. We could just bring the display down, but it's not quite as customizable. So Samsung winning out, I think, again, when it comes to overall display experience, but if you love vivid and saturation, you're probably gonna be a little annoyed at this current time. Not in the area of software, iOS is iOS. I mean, I don't wanna like keep beating this same old story over and over again. They get updates all the time, almost like too frequently. You got the app store, you got the grid of icons, the app library, the widgets. It's cohesive, it's sticky, it's amazing software. Everything looks polished and sync. It's it's really like almost unbeatable, like it really is. But if you like functionality and you like, you know, taking like everything that annoys me about the iPhone exists on the Samsung. Like this is your this is your solution. So for example, what annoys me about the iPhone is like what I said earlier, no ability to turn the landscape. Samsung has that, for example, no ability to have split screens. Samsung has that, but not only the other Android phones have that, but Samsung does it better because they have like pop views and stuff, which makes it even a stronger experience than some other Android phones. And something very silly on the iPhone is that you don't have a history in the calculator. I don't know why no, no one really ever mentions this, but it's super annoying. Samsung has the best calculator on an Android phone and the history section is quite nice. I know it's silly that even like, oh, this guy really, he's gonna try to convince me on a calculator. Hey bro, when you start doing your, your budget and your calculator and you keep messing up because you gotta go back like this, oh, I hit the wrong number, oh, so, uh, let's clear all and start again. I know you can download a calculator from the app store, but I want one built right in. Uh, luckily, if you have Android, you can use the Google calculator or you can use the Samsung calculator. It's a beast in that area, just something small. Um, also, they have the Galaxy Store, the Play Store, but it's it's kind of hard to think of every single thing right now, um, but one of the things that really is separating this one right now, we know Apple's going to go here this year with iOS 18, is the AI features. The one I've been enjoying the most is this one right here, the Samsung Internet, where you can summarize text. Um, you could like be in an article and you would just summarize the ability to read that article quicker. It'll just give you a summary. You can also use things like the Samsung keyboard with AI, the phone time translations if people are talking a different language. It's all about the AI this year. You do have to give it the ability to process data on device only or not. And sometimes you have to turn that off to use some of the features. Now, some people are saying that this is going to be a paid feature in the future. I'm going to be a little annoyed if you got to pay a subscription to use a feature on a phone. I really hope they don't go that way. iPhone still, to me, has a more polished look, though, a more everyday look. It's for people who don't uh, care about phones like that. They just want a really nice one for their everyday life. It blends in the background. It feels more appliance-like. It feels more just works and gets the job done and it's beautiful and premium and everyone uses it so you're gonna have no issues with communication. That's about it, that's how I feel. Longer seven years of software updates but not as consistently. They come out slower and the rollouts are different and when Samsung comes out with newer phones, historically they have took longer to bring updates to the older models so we'll have to see how they do there. I would argue though that more, most customers are not gonna keep their phone more than four or five years so I think five years is all a phone really needs. In the area of speed and performance, Apple takes the technical win with the you know the scores and benchmarks being a little better in certain areas the a17 pro chip being you know in-house built but those are just um let's just talk about you know scores in actuality there's not a lot you can do besides rendering out some video um, playing some certain games on here like Resident Evil and stuff like that some graphically intense games that really showcase the power day to day though I think the Samsung has the better heat management. I don't feel it get as warm and toasty as often. And um, I think the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the animation speed is a little faster. In the actual everyday use, the Samsung feels like the snappier phone. The iPhone has been feeling like the smoother phone. Both feel about equally powerful regardless of what the scores and benchmarks, testings, We'll say. So a couple weeks later, one area where Samsung is really offering strong value is they typically give you a storage, a free storage upgrade, especially at the beginning with the promotional deals. 
and they do so they do bring this promotional deal back throughout the year so you get a ton more storage for much less money and this is where the samsung really still shines um, especially if you buy one and they're offering it for the same price as like a 256 that's a good deal because the apple device will never give you free storage upgrade you're always going to pay a few hundred dollars more to get the higher storage for that reason i actually have never gone past 256 gig on my iphone 15 pro max or any other iphone i've never really went past the 256 gig i just take off the the stuff if it gets too full and restart because i don't feel like paying an extra 200 dollars for the same phone just for a little more storage so i like that samsung throws it in for free in the area of auto performance, the Samsung with the Dolby Atmos enabled is a little bit louder than the iPhone, but the iPhone sounds super crispy. So I would probably take the iPhone for the actual sound, but the Samsung is louder. I will give it that. At the end of the day, Android fans will be Android fans. iPhone fans will be iPhone fans. These phones are going neck and neck, but I do think the S24 Ultra definitely surpasses the 15 Pro Max due to the AI features, the longer zoom, but it really makes me think, where is Apple going to go next? Are they going to go larger? Or are they going to bring AI features with iOS 18, which I do expect? And I think we'll have a much tighter competition at the end of the year. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick here. Be sure to be well. And peace.